Hello and welcome back to another From the Workshop with me, your host, Brandon Hart. I am here once again in the fabulous Nimble Ink Nerd Lair. And this time, I thought we would take things from the realm of the theoretical down to real world practical application. So uh, what I'd like to do in this case is retrieve an actual real life Nimble Ink ner Engine Nerd and uh, show you how things are really done. So, uh, hang on one second, I need to hack the Gibson. Thanks for getting here, Sean. 200. So today, I thought I would take a little bit of time with uh, some help from Sean here, one of the Nimble Ink engineers. What is your position? I'm an electrical engineer here at Nimble Ink. Okay. Uh, so Nimble Ink engineer that uh, can actually walk us through doing something called a socket dial. And a socket dial, uh, what, what, what is a socket dial, Sean? Uh, a socket dial is essentially opening up a TCP IP internet socket using the modem cellular connection and then sending some data through that socket. And is this a pretty common thing that very most of common. our viewers will need to do? Yep, very yeah. common. Okay, all right, so that's why we picked it. Uh, it's one of those things that a lot of you are going to encounter as you start to work with uh, different cellular radios out there uh, and go to transmit data over the interwebs. Um, so, uh, again, we usually talk about things in theory and how stuff works and, and at high level and, and why we do things and so on, but, um, we don't really show actually doing it. So Sean is here to, uh, to do exactly that. So Sean, what is the first thing that people need to know about, uh, setting up a socket dial on, uh, an LTE or, or whatever radio? Okay, uh, well, the first thing you should do is probably turn on the modem. That would uh, that'd be helpful. Fair, <laughs> fair point, yes. All right, so okay. uh, we have the modem turned on already here. and uh, Yeah, so for this example, um, just for reference, we are using a Nimblelink Skywire. This is the NL-SW-LTE-QBG96 because we are good at naming things in catchy ways. And uh, this is an M1 and NBIOT Skywire with 2G fallback. So today we're going to be using, what, the M1 functionality? Correct, LTE. Okay, LTE, LTE, LTE category M1. Yep. Right on. Well, uh, why don't you tell us exactly how this works then? Okay. So uh, here we have the uh, the modems all booted up and ready to go. So first Perfect. we'll just check and make sure that the AT parser is working properly. And and AT, that's kind of how everything starts? Yeah, it's, it's just kind of a test command that you can use to okay. make sure that the serial or USB interface is working properly. It's like it's like yelling, attention, to the, to the, to the modem. Essentially, right? yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. okay, so then uh, another thing you should do probably is check the signal strength. So I'll type in that command now. And uh, Look at those numbers. Yep. Are so those good? Those are good numbers, yep. So each each different modem has different ways of encoding the signal strength. Okay. And uh, so you have to refer to the, the AT command manual for the particular Skywire that you're using. Okay. So in this case for the BG96, the higher the number, the better on the left side of the comma there. Okay. So 31 would be excellent signal strength. And that uh, translates to an actual uh, power level for the received uh, signal. Okay. So but 31 on this modem doesn't necessarily translate to the same thing as 31 on, say, our... Uh, SVZM20. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. So you should always refer to the AT command manual to get the particular encoding gotcha. for the signal strength command. Okay. Uh, and then the next thing we should do is set up a PDP context. Okay. PDP context. A PDP context is essentially just, um, it, it helps set up the cellular connection and had, it contains a bunch of information about the mobile equipment and essentially just is used by the network in the modem to establish a connection. Okay. So you have to tell it what those things are. Correct, and yes. So you're setting that up. Okay, let's yep. do that. Okay, so to set up PDP context, you want to enter this particular command, and then once again, refer to the AT command manual for the, the modem that you're using, because this you know stuff might change in here. Right. So on the QBG96, there's only one PDP context that you can activate. Oh. So you type one in there, and then the next thing that you have to enter is the internet protocol that you want to use. So for this particular case, we're going to use IPv4 v6 so that's both ipv4 and ipv6 correct all right mm -hmm. that's and fancy. then 
the next thing that we type in is the APN, which is the access point name. Sure. And that's the name of the particular gateway that the cellular that uh, sorry, the gateway between the cellular connection and the internet, essentially. Okay. So you're specifying which gateway to use for the cellular connection. For more information on an, uh, what an APN is, where you get them, and how to use them, refer to another From the Workshop video, which will most likely be linked to in the description, or maybe even here on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had to. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so once we have everything typed in, everything's all correct, we'll just hit enter. Okay. And if it Everything went fine and the formatting's okay. It'll just spit out okay at you. Yeah. So then we're good to like go I from do. there. Very good. Yep. So after you activate, or sorry, after you configure the PDP context, the next yep. thing that you want to do is activate the PDP context. Okay. So for the Quoctel mode. So we here, set it up. Now we're turning it on. Correct. Yep. So okay. there's an activation command. And since it's the first PDP context, the argument to this command is one. Sure. So we hit enter. And if everything goes well, we'll see okay. Okay. And then on the BG96, you can uh, make sure that you got an IP address after activating the PDP context. So what you can do is type in this command. And then as you can see, we have an IP address, so we are connected to the network. So that's not actually doing anything except just asking the modem exactly. what its IP address is. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that's just a good way of verifying that you've established your connection and everything is, is good to go from there. All right. All right. So, so far we have uh, checked the signal strength. We uh, set up the PDP context, we activated the PDP context, and then just to make sure it actually worked and received an IP address, you asked it what its IP address was, it came back with a valid IP address that wasn't just zeros or right. ones or whatever. Yep. Uh, so we know that we've got a real IP address, so we should be good to go to initiate the, the socket, right? Correct, yeah. So <clears throat> the next thing that we want to do is actually open a socket yep. to an endpoint on some sort of a server online. So to do that, we'll type in this command. Okay. Well, not yet, but we'll get to the okay part. Correct, right. yep. That's my favorite, if you can't tell. <laughs> okay, so, and then I'll explain each of these different uh, things that we're typing in here. Yeah, that'd be good, because I see some stuff that looks understandable by humans and I mm -hmm. see some things that is not random numbers yeah. yeah yep okay so I'll just walk through the the command from the beginning here okay so this first parameter this is the particular PDP context that we want to use for the socket right so Which is the in one this, we set in this up case earlier. it would be one yep, yep the one that we have activated okay and then this zero here is the zeroth socket so you can have multiple sockets open at the same time. Right. So here we're just opening up the first one that's available. Right, which is the zeroth one. Zeroth one, correct, yep. Do you say zeroth in normal conversation? I do, all the time actually. <laughs> Such an engine nerd. <laughs> um, so this next one here, TCP. Yep. This is basically specifying that we want to use TCP protocol for the connection. Sure. Which um, you can also specify UDP protocol if you wanted to, but TCP is better because uh, TCP it's different from UDP in that it uh, the server verifies, the, the two different parties in the transaction verify that they yeah. receive the information, whereas UDP, there's no verification like that. So three-way handshake. Yep, it's, yeah. it's better to choose TCP. Okay, but it does use more data. It does use more data, correct. So. Yeah. yeah. For You've more information warned. on that, refer to the fr from the workshop video about <laughs> using UDP versus TCP. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Okay. All right. The next one uh, is uh, Dweet.io. So this is the web server that we want to connect to. So for this particular example, we'll just use Dweet.io, which sure. is a really, really uh, good website for testing out socket dials because it's very easy and intuitive. Okay. So we'll use that. Um, and then this next parameter, 80, that is the port that we're actually connecting to on the server. Sure. Standard port 80. Standard port 80, yep. And then the next zero is the local port, which we don't really have to care about in this situation. Would you say that's the zeroth port? It is the zeroth port, correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. And then <laughs> the next zero here, this is uh, specifying the, the type of connection that we want to use. So on the QBG96, there's different, different ways that you can um, do a socket dial. So for instance, right now we're doing buffered access mode, which... Um, which allows you to, there's a there's a send and, and receive command. Okay. So when we open this socket, it's going to open and it's not going to expect any output immediately. Okay. So to actually send the data, we have to use the send command. All right. so, so that allows you to actually type whatever it is you need to type and correct. then send it rather than sending every bit that you actually are typing in. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So for instance, an alternative to uh, buffered access mode is online mode or transparent mode. Sure. And in that case, it would immediately expect your HTTP request. Okay. And as you type it in, you wouldn't be able to see what you're typing because 
whatever you're sending is getting sent through the socket right, right away. Right. So it's you know it's just preference when it comes to which one that you want to use. But uh, so pro tip, if you do get to this this point and uh, well after this point I guess once the socket is open and you start typing things and nothing is showing up. You yes. are most likely not in buffered access mode. You are Correct. in transparent mode. Yep. Um, and what you are typing is actually being sent over that open socket. Correct. Um, Correct. So it's it's not broken. It's just that um, you're not seeing it mm -hmm. because everything's being sent as soon as you type it. Yep. All right. Great. Thank you. Okay. So now I'll hit enter. We'll get an OK. Perfect. And then we also want to take note of this URC here. And this URC is basically saying that we have successfully established a connection with the zeroth socket. Okay, you, you said URC. URC, yes. Yes, and that is a what? An unsolicited result code. Nice. So that's basically, um, it's just a, a response that the modem will print out to the serial line, and it's basically just has useful information for the user to, okay. uh, to you know, do something with. So in this particular case, it's saying that we successfully opened up the socket. Perfect. We have an active socket connection right now. Okay, so now what we need to do is actually do our HTTP request. So okay. we're going to type in this command right here, and then this will open up a prompt for us to type in our HTTP request. Sure, that's the greater than sign. Correct, yep, yeah. so when you see that, you know that the modem's... The bigger number. <laughs> uh, when, when you see that, you know that the modem's ready for your, uh, your, your uh, HTTP request. Okay. And here I'm just naming the thing that's going to be created on uh, Dweet.io's server. I'm just going to call it NimbleLink Test. You can Sounds use the like IMEI thing. of the modem or really anything that you want. Sure. And then it's also important whenever you're sending an HTTP re uh, request, you have to add a couple carriage return carriage returns and uh, uh, line feed characters at the end. Okay. And that basically um, that's required by HTTP protocol, and that basically signals the end of a request. So you can't just hit enter. You can't just hit enter. It'll it'll sit there and wait, and it thinks yeah. it's an incomplete request. So what you need to do is on your keyboard press Control M, Control J, Control M, Control J, and then that's a complete HTTP request. And to actually send it, you press Control Z. Huh. Yeah. And then that will send the request. So after I sent the HTTP request, yep. now you can see I got this URC saying send OK. So that indicates that it was a successful HTTP request. And well then I done. also, thank you, and yeah. I also got this uh, this other URC that says that we received something back. So oh. this this is the response to our request. Okay. So what we can do now is read this uh, response. And then what you want to do again is specify the socket that you're currently using. And if you hit enter, you oh. see all this stuff pop up on the screen and you can see the, uh, you know, all the, the HTTP data that we got back and, uh, and uh, if it was a successful um, transaction with Dweet.io, you'll get this message, a similar message like this back every time, basically saying that sure. we created a thing called NimbleLink test yep. on their server. Yep. So now what we can do to demonstrate another uh, HTTP request is we can actually do a git and query this, you know, uh, this thing that we've created on Dweet.io. Okay, so like before, we're going to use the send command. It's going to pop up the prompt, wait for us to put in our request. So we'll type in our HTTP GET request in this this case. And everything you're typing right now is pretty much just going to the Dweet.io server. This this isn't stuff that's uh, you're typing to the modem as much, right? Uh, in, in this particular case, it's waiting for me to actually send or hit enter or sorry control z and then that actually sends the request right so unlike uh transparent mode it's not sending data actively right now until i sure actually send it yeah so if you were to type something wrong you can go back correct, correct it yep. and then hit send uh in order to actually send that through exactly yep great okay and like before i add the carriage return a new line which uh, again was what control m control j control m control j and then control z, z. to send it got it Okay, and then again, like before, we got the send OK URC and the other URC saying that we have uh, data to read. So we'll type in the read command, specify the socket, and then here we have another HTTP response here. Another 200 and, OK. Nice. Yep, another 200 OK, yep. And then we have the little blurb here from tweet.io basically saying, you know, that thing exists on our server. Cool. Yep. And then when you're done with the socket, you can close it. Why would we want to close it? It's it's just good practice that you don't have a socket, you know, sitting there idly. Yeah. And it'll it'll time out eventually if you just let it sit there, but it's, you know, if you're done with it, it's best practice to yeah. just close it's it. It's not efficient. Don't leave them open. Exactly. Close your sockets, people. All right. Okay. So there we closed it and then Great. 
that's it. Sock it down in a nutshell, essentially. Awesome. Now, if you were done using the modem, uh, using the network connection at the time, um, you should disconnect. Correct? correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so always gracefully disconnect. Don't just yank power mm -hmm. to the modem. Um, that that uh, is very bad things. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, good. All right, cool. Well, um, you know, again, thank you very much for showing us how You're things welcome. really work in the real world, or at least online in the cyber world. And uh, um, uh, if you enjoyed this, let us know. Uh, again, this is a little bit different than what we typically do. We like to talk about a lot of topics in, in you know, in theory and so on. Uh, but some real practical application uh, we posted, then we did a get request, we brought stuff down, um, and happiness was had by all. So um, thank you very much for joining us for this episode of From the Workshop. Again, I am your host, Brandon Hart. This is one of our engineers, Sean Ruttering. And uh, both of us would like to tell you, uh, that you should s subscribe, ring the bell to receive notifications when new episodes are posted. Um, and if you have any thoughts, any questions, any comments that you would like to send us directly, you can do so by sending them to the email address right here, workshop at nimblelink.com. And until next time, have fun building. <laughs>